be excellent to each other. And party on, dudes. No, wait, hang on. <laughs> Sorry. Wrong intro. Hey, y'all. Boogie Knight here. How's it going? Hope you're having a fantastic Friday night so far. Now, let's take a few minutes and talk about movies that make us feel nostalgic. And no, I'm not talking about Disney movies. That's a whole different category all by itself. Think back to when you were a child growing up. And think about the movies that you like to watch. Now think about the movies you love to watch. Now think about the movies you love to binge watch over and over again to the point that it made your parents sick and go, oh my god, are they watching that again? Now fast forward to whatever age you are right now and think about those movies you love to binge watch. And if that doesn't at least put a small modicum of a smile on your face, you are a liar. Now, growing up in the early 80s, of course there was a lot of movies that we saw, whether we wanted to or not, E.T. Sorry, I'm not going to go into that, but that movie was nightmare fuel for me growing up. Um, I can count on one hand the movies that I love to binge watch. Of course, the original Star Wars series 4, 5, and 6, of course, being three of them. But there is one movie in particular that I saw in the early 90s that I loved so much to the point that I not only have it on DVD, and I've seen it more times than I can count, but every time I see it, I can't help but think back to those days, and the movie still makes me smile like crazy, and it still makes me laugh like an idiot. And that movie is called Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Um, now, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure was a 1988 comedy movie that was the breakout movie for um, Alex Winter and Keanu Reeves. Now, I know what you're thinking right now, but Boogie Night, you hate comedy movies. Exactly! That's why I love this movie so much. Modern day comedy movies are nothing more, in my opinion, consisting of dick and fart jokes, grown adults squealing like prepubescent children, and I can't even call them shenanigans. I just call them poorly thought and poorly executed nonsense. Bill and Ted, yes, it is whimsical and it is goofy and it is zany, but it's well thought out zane and it's well thought out silliness and it's definitely a shenanigans movie. So, it's such a good film, and here's why it brings back memories for me in particular. Um, it was in the early 90s, it was probably 91 or 92, I know this because my family and I were living in New Jersey at the time, exit 4. Um, and I was doing something upstairs at the time, I forget, I, I heard mom and dad laughing like crazy. And it takes a lot to make them crack up like that if you're watching a movie or a TV show. Now, we're just giving each other hell and, you know, poking fun and getting into shenanigans with each other? Of course, yes, we're making, we're going to be cracking up because we're idiots like that. Um, and I walk downstairs, and the only real spoiler without giving away the plot in a nutshell, I'm going to say this. Ice skating Socrates. Think about that for one second here. So, I sat down and finished watching the movie with him, and we were cracking up the entire time. But since I missed three quarters of the movie, I'm like, what was that? They're like, it's Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. I'm like, can we rent that? Sure. So that weekend, we went out to Blockbuster. Mm-hmm. Blockbuster Video. Remember that, kids? Probably not. Um, where we got on VHS, dating myself again, and we cracked up the entire way through again. And I didn't see the movie again until college, until I went to the um, campus video store at my university, and I saw it on DVD, and my face lit up like a Christmas tree. So I rewatched that. And I watched it again. And then I watched it with my girlfriend at the time. And then, excuse me, fast forward again several years to the point when Harkov and I were living at the Nerd Cave. We watched it again. <laughs> but then I didn't see it for probably seven years until I moved down here. And I finally caved and bought it on DVD. And I practically worn out the DVD in itself because I love watching it so much. And I look back about all that, and it's not just flashing back to when I was a kid, you know, young, fancy, free before reality hit the fan. It was just a good old-fashioned comedy movie that modern comedy movies lack today. And that is zaniness to the point without being just over-the-top and idiotic. Yeah, I'm looking at you, Will Ferrell. Um, uh, and plot points, and just thought out interaction with each other and character development, well thought out character development, while still maintaining that glow that makes that movie good. And that's what separates Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure from other comedy movies, including the horribly done shit fest 
Bill and Ted's bogus journey, and I'm not even going to talk about that garbage. That was just a complete dumpster fire. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about Bill Excellent Adventure. So let me go over the plot in a nutshell without trying to give away too many spoilers. This is basically something you could pull on the IMDb summary page. Now, Bill and Ted, um, Bill being played by Alex Winter and Ted being played by Keanu Reeves, are two stereotypical California na-bra kind of surfer-looking mooks. Um, and they're trying to start a heavy metal band or a classic rock band called Wild Stallions. Now, mind you, these two can't even play guitars. They play guitar better than me, but that's not saying much. My brother's dog can probably play guitar better than I can. But here's the thing also. Since they are so hell-bent on trying to start this rock band, they are flunking out of their history class. Now, they flunk out of their history class, they flunk out of school. So, but somehow, fast forward to the future, Wild Stallion's music causes peace around the universe. But to be able to do that, they need to be able to pass their class and stay in school. Otherwise, they're completely buggered. So enter Rufus, played by the late George Carlin, rest in peace, who is sent back in time in a dilapidated telephone booth to guide them to pass their history exam. And what does that consist of? They have to travel through time and pick up historical figures and bring them back to the present. This is by two dudes who can barely spell CPR, all right? So just think about that. And that's pretty much the only thing I'm going to say about the plot, other than the one spoiler about Socrates. But that's not just why I love the movie so much. I'm going to start off with the base of it, and that is the antics. It's a very much shenanigans film movie. There's some, there's some slapstick to it, but not by much. But just the interactions. Think about it. You're a character, a famous historical character from different countries, from different points in time. It could be pre-Judeo-Christian feudal somewhere. Let's, let's, for the sake and purposes of the conversation, let's say Europe. It could be somebody from America, it could be somebody from Asia, it could be somebody from Africa, it could be from somewhere else. I mean, there's so many different possibilities. And think of that all of these characters interacting with each other, meeting for their first time with language barriers, not knowing what they're, what's going on in the present. They're seeing things for the first time, and they're still stuck in their own mindset. So there's just this level of zanitude as they interact with the world they're in, whether it's one part of time, whether it's another part of time, whether Bill and Ted have introduced them to something, whether it's them interacting with modern 80s day uh, California. Just think about that for a hot second. I mean, it, maybe it's just me, but I cannot help but laugh just because they portrayed it perfectly. But that's just my opinion on it. And it's a good old-fashioned shenanigans movie. It's a good old-fashioned, it's a good old romp. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not to the point where it's like, oh my God, dude, cut the pills in half and move on. And that's just one thing. And that's like the baseline for it. What it really comes down to is the character development. But that's the last thing I'm going to talk about because the thing I want to talk about before then are the special effects. For an 80s movie, the special effects were spot on. This was a time before CGI was a big thing and prosthetics was just slowly becoming a thing. I mean, the only real CGI at the time that I can think of was... Um, the original Star Wars trilogy, 4, 5, and 6. But that was kind of groundbreaking by itself. This movie didn't have CGI, but rather relied on a lot of superimposing, special effects, that kind of thing. And while it does have that 80s look to it, at the time, growing up in the late 80s, and then, of course, when I saw it in the early 90s, you're like, it was ahead of its time. It was definitely ahead of its time. It had all the right facets to it. I mean, when they're time traveling, the whole time traveling scene, of course it wasn't like the Millennium Falcon doing the hyper jump through space, but it retained a lot of good effects to it. It was rock solid. But of course that was just another kind of just a small component of it. So let's now talk about the character interaction with each other. Bill and Ted. Yes, okay, they're best friends and they're completely morons. Let's, let's not, you know, distract ourselves from that point. But it was, their friendship was to the point that they were practically family. And I want you to think back to that one friend you had growing up. Maybe it's your friend to this day, but think about that one person growing up that you can practically finish each other's sentences. I had one friend when I was 10, um, 
to the point when we graduated high school that she and I, throughout you know elementary school and middle school and parts of high school, that like we were such tight friends. She and I were joined at the hip, and we kind of had that same friendship that Bill and Ted and I have. Or Bill and Ted, Bill and Ted and I, wow, Bill and Ted had. And then I think about my friendship with Harkov, and I think back to when he and I first became friends and realizing how much we had in common, besides the point that our ex-girlfriends were roommates at the time, um, and how that evolved into our friendship that we have today. And I think about how he and I are pretty much, we consider ourselves brothers from other mothers, and I know I can rely on him on anything. And that's Bill and Ted. And that's what I think a lot of people have back in the day. Maybe they still do today, like I said. But it brings back to that nostalgia point. And yes, they are doing silly and goofy things together. And there's this constant throwback to um, this air guitar solo whenever something awesome happens. And if you've ever seen Bill and Ted, you know what I'm talking about. Usually, you know, preluded by saying, Excellent! Or in you know, those other stereotypical, like, you know, goofy surfer terms like, nah, brah, no way, yes way, kind of things. But, you know, just the way they act with one another, and then the way they act with the other characters, um, the characters through time. I mean, there's almost a development of the characters through time as they start out in their own little worlds, and then they kind of mature into their own right as they kind of see the world around them and the history around them, particularly in modern day, at using that term loosely, uh, San Dimas, California in the 1980s. So there's that kind of interaction that starts out with being like, who the hell are you? And then it evolves into a friendship with them right then and there, to the climax of the end when all the characters are helping them save their history report. Um, and something that's actually, you're, you're going to probably think at the time, bring in the perverts, is the relationship with Bill's mother. Or I guess I should say Bill's stepmother. Bill's stepmother, I'm not sure how much older she is, but she is probably, I'd say, maybe no more than five or six years older than Bill. Um, I mean, there's an ongoing joke that every time Bill sees, like, oh, hi, Missy, and she glares at him, and he's like, oh, yeah, I mean, Mom. So, of course, you're probably thinking, like, well, how old is Bill's father? Well, Bill's father is your stereotypical father's age for somebody who's, you know, in their late teens. And before you start thinking, you know, going, cringing, going, oh, God, here we go with the pervert jokes. No, I mean, it wasn't, I mean, yes, of course, there was some dirty moments of it, but it was more laughable than cringy. And I've seen my share of cringe comedy movies, okay? So, it's hilarious. It's a running gag, I guess you should say. Um, and Missy, I wouldn't say she's as daft as Bill and Ted, because their level of daftitude is completely, you know, a whole nother level that I don't, can't even bear to think about. Hers is more of a point that it's just purely nonchalant to the point that it is precious. I mean, with, once again, without going into spoilers, she sees other characters, like the historical figures, and she's like, oh, hey, Bill, hey, Ted, hey, guys, and just goes back to her work, like, not even missing a beat, like, it's just, you know, okay, whatever, have fun. <laughs> I'm not doing it justice. Um... It's just that kind of funniness and the interaction with them, or how Ted is so completely different from his father. His father, of course, is a staunch, um, I'm guessing former military, but he's a police officer. So, of course, there's a study of contrast between the two. And there's no, I mean, it's definitely tough love at its finest. But then it comes to a big conclusion at the end when there's this kind of realization, not just with Ted, but with his father. It's like, wait, what? Oh, that makes sense. And let's face it, we... We all know somebody that's kind of like, I'm not going to say the complete opposite of their parents, but definitely went through a phase where they're like, yeah, I'm going to dare to be different. I know I was. In fact, I still dare to be different today, but in different ways. But just all these things brought together, it's just intricately wound, while still retaining that sense of comedy. And even at the most serious points, there's always a level of zane to it. There's always a level of silliness. And, I mean, and when it hits the fan, it still makes you laugh, because you know that it's a situation that Bill and Ted are somehow going to get their way out of with one thing or the next. Not just because they're both, you know, dumber than a bag of hammers, but because it works in their favor. And that's what it all comes down to, is just everything is so well put together in this movie that it works out to a T. And, of course, it ends, you know, on a positive note, otherwise it wouldn't give rise to a bad sequel and then an even worse Nintendo game. But that's just what it comes down to. So I definitely encourage y'all, if you already haven't seen it, 
go check it out. And if you have seen it, watch it again. Hell, I know I'm going to this weekend at some point if I have time. So with that in mind, if you're not going to watch this movie, I want you guys at some point in the next week or so to find that movie that makes you nostalgic and watch it. And let me know in the comments below what that movie is and why you like it so much. But with that in mind, other than that, I hope you all have a fantastic weekend, and I'll catch you in the flip set, all right? Peace.